Okay gang, we're back. Well, we're continuing with example 14, but we're just gonna change the setup of the question a little bit. So we still have 70% of STAT students doing their homework in time for it to be collected and graded. Each student is gonna do their homework independently. We still have a STATS class of 10 students, but now we have what is the probability that no more than eight will do their homework on time? And this is changing because this phrase in the original example 14 was exactly eight. So when you see this phrase, no more than eight, right? We've got our standard probability, right? So you know you're gonna have P and you're gonna have something in parentheses. All right, we know we're gonna do that. And let's just remind ourselves, right? We were on a binomial distribution, 10 students, 70% chance of success for any one individual student. All right, and we were counting the number of students out of these 10 that would do their homework on time. So when we hear no more than eight, all right, no more than is saying we want less than or equal to eight. All right, so instead of having an equal sign in that parentheses, like we did with the original example, we have a less than or equal to sign. So I want you to imagine if I had made a table, and I'm not going to, but if I had made a table, Right, and let me just do this real quick, right? If we had x against p of x, and I'm not even gonna have enough room to do all this, right? We would have had zero, one student could have done it on time, two, three, all the way up to all 10 students could have done it on time, right? That would have been the table if I was going to make one. So when they say, what is the probability that x is less than or equal to eight? If we start inside these parentheses, right? I need to include zero because zero is less than or equal to eight. I need to include one because one is less than or equal to eight. I need to include two, three. I'm gonna put one extra column here. I need to include everything up to eight. I just don't wanna include nine and 10 because nine is not less than or equal to eight and 10 is not less than or equal to eight. So to get any of these numbers down here individually, I would use binomial PDF, which we picked up in the previous example. So there's a couple ways to do this problem. I'm going to show you the long way, and then I'm gonna show you the quicker way. So you could do that this is the probability that x is zero, or one, or two, or three, four, five, six, all the way up to x equals eight. So you could actually crunch nine PDFs. So I could do the binomial PDF here, plus here, plus here, da 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 da, plus eight. All right, so you could calculate nine PDFs. That's, that's a completely reasonable way to do this. It'll, it'll take a little while in terms of crunching it on your calculator, but I would call this method one. So I could add nine PDF calculations. All right, and that's fine, that's great. The way that I tend to do it is there's a function built in on your calculator called binomial CDF. All right, so we were doing PDFs up here, and again, PDFs go with the equal sign, but your calculator knows that this can be pretty cumbersome, so it created a different function inside of your calculator called binomial CDF. And CDF, that goes exactly with the less than or equal to symbol. So what I could do, Instead of doing all of this shenanigans, I can just say on my calculator, can you do binomial CDF? We still have the same commands. We have 10 because there were 10 students, 70% chance of success for any one individual student doing their homework. And when you put eight in here, your calculator knows, or it's been programmed to do eight on down. Right, so your calculator will do binomial CDF and it'll calculate the PDF at zero, one, two, three, four, all the way up to eight, and it'll add them for you. And it's one calculator command here and it's so much faster. So I'm gonna flip over to my calculator, all right, and then I'll, I'll circle back and we'll just finish this up in a bit. Hey Math 43, let's take a look at example 14 again, um, but 14 revisited this time and we're gonna focus on how we can calculate this probability where I want the probability that no more than eight of these students will do their homework on time. And when you are no more than eight, we can interpret that as eight or fewer or a less than or equal to eight. So if you imagine 
that less than or equal to eight of my students did the homework. That means zero could have done it on time, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight. So I could actually add nine, if you see my fingers here, this pinky is down, but I'm not the greatest at it, maybe like that, nine PDFs together. I could add the PDF at zero, or one, or two, or three, or four, or five, or six, or seven, or eight. And way back in chapter three, we learned that when we have the ors, we can add their probabilities. Uh, we would subtract out for the overlap, but these are disjoint events. There is no overlap, all right? If I'm looking at 10 students, I can't at the same time have eight doing their homework and seven doing their homework. It was one or the other. So we can just add these nine PDFs together. So again, this is what I'll call method one. I wanna show you how this plays out because I think for some students, adding the separate PDFs just makes more sense to them. And that's great. If that's you, do it. And then I wanna show you method two using the CDF um, calculator function. So let's take a look at these nine PDFs. This is gonna be a long calculator string to put in. But what I can do is I can add the probability at zero. So let me go here. All right, I gotta click all the way to binomial PDF. Let this catch up. And then again, we would add in that we had 10 students, 70% chance of success for any one student doing their homework, not the collective between the 10, but anytime I talk to one student, 70% chance of success. And I would want the likelihood that zero of those 10 did their homework on time. And I want to add to that another PDF. So we'll go here. And I believe in my calculator, I was at A. So let's see if that works. Yeah. So I get binomial PDF coming in. So we'll go 10.7, and then I want the likelihood that one student did their homework. And I've gotta add nine of these together, so it's going to take a little while for me to enter this into my calculator. Okay, so then we would do 10.7, and we are up to two. I've gotta go up to eight, oops, and if I see a little typo, let me hit comma two right there. All right, so we've got the PDF at zero, plus the PDF at one, plus the PDF at two. I've gotta to get to eight, so give me a few minutes to get this entered into my calculator, and then we're gonna hope that I didn't make a typo. I think I got one more. Okay, 10.78. I mean, look at that. I'm just gonna keep my fingers crossed that when I hit the button, I did it correctly, which I did, right? But you can see how prone to potential typos that is. And in all honesty, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it on my calculator screen like this. So I'll show you what I would do if I preferred the PDF method. So if I was gonna do this, let me clear all of that out, see what's in my lists from before. Oh, I have a lot of stuff in there. Let me clear out all of my lists and I'll show you how I would have done this using my lists as a spreadsheet. So I would have gone in here and said, well, I need all of the numbers between zero and eight. So let me put those into L1. Do I have them all in there? That's looking good. But basically what you wanna do with all of these numbers in L1 is you wanna binomial PDF them. So I'm gonna go over to L2 and define it to do that. So I'm gonna say, hey, can you take the binomial PDF, right? Now that we were learning was in my A function. So can you take the binomial PDF? We're gonna go 10, right, comma 0.7. And then can you do that for every number in L1? So instead of me entering 10.70, 10.71, 10 10.72, like you saw on that previous calculation screen, I'm just gonna have my calculator crunch it all 
When I hit enter, it's going to auto populate. Great. And this might look like it's a number over one, right? And you might say, well, I thought probabilities were between zero and one. They are. And you can see the scientific notation here of the e to the negative six. All right, so then really all I need to do is add up L2. Let me go back home. And we've done this a couple of times, but since we don't do it that frequently, it might be hard to remember. If you want to add all the um, items in a list, all the values in a list, hit second in stat, go over to your math drop down menu and option five in there says sum. So I would like to sum L2, all right, and there it is. So if I was really gonna go the PDF method, I totally use my lists to do this. All right, now I'm gonna clear all of this out because this still isn't the most efficient way to do this. So let me clear my key press history. All right, let me actually clear this too while I'm here. Ooh, and I'll clear it one more time. Uh, so there is a different calculator command built in, and uh, I highlighted it over here. It's the CDF function. So when you have a less than or equal to symbol in those parentheses, there is a function built into your calculator for cumulative values of your variable, but it's only on down, right? You cannot use this, well, you can't directly use it for greater than, greater than or equal to, or even less than. This is solely for less than or equal to. We'll have to manipulate things algebraically to work the greater than, the greater than or equal to, and we're gonna practice that a little bit later on. But I wanna be clear that CDF is solely for less than or equal to. So I do have the less than or equal to lighting up here, and we've been looking at that number, that 0.8506. So let me show you how this would work in your calculator. Go into your distributions, now my binomial PDF was in A. You can see my binomial CDF is in B. And again, some calculators, they might be in A or B, just depending on how recent your calculator is. But they all have this function, so go find it. So I'm going to go to B. All right, And then it's the same deal. You enter your number of trials. So I have 10 students. Separate that with a comma. Your probability of success for any one trial, 70%. And then I would like to go from 8 on down. And because that CDF is there, your calculator will know to build in the PDF at 0 through 8 and add them all together. So when I close this parentheses and hit enter, you can see it's a much more efficient way of getting those numbers. Okay, so that's what we got for um, PDF versus CDF. Now we're going to practice what do we do when we have a greater than? What do we do when we have a greater than or equal to? So we're going to get that under our belts. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Okay, so we're back. Let's let's actually crunch this. I know you just saw me do it on my calculator, but let's do this together one more time. So second vars, I'm going to hit the binomials. All right. And I'm going to use option B this time because I want binomial CDF. I had 10 students. Probability of any one student doing their homework was 70% and I wanted eight or fewer and it's eight or fewer because we see the CDF here. So let me go ahead and hit enter and I'm seeing about 85% um, doing their homework. All right, there's an 85% chance that eight or fewer will do their homework. So 0.851, okay. All right, now with that, we're gonna extend. And when I say extend, Let's talk about where we've been and where we need to go to, where we need to extend to. So if I go back into these binomials, uh, we, we've talked about you use this for the equal sign, you use this for the less than or equal to sign. But there's a lot more symbols out there, right? So if I talk about the symbols, yes, we have equals to, and yes, we have less than or equal to, and that's great that we have those two buttons, but we also have less than, greater than, and greater than or equal to. So we got to talk about what do you do with these three? How, how do I handle this? Because I don't have a direct calculator button to get those. But with just these two, you can actually manipulate these two calculator functions to get these other three. So let's, let's practice that and see what that looks like. So here we go. I'm going to scoot this up. So we're going to still continue with this example, but let's change the setup of the question. So now it says, what is the probability? And I've got more than eight, all right? Probability that more than eight. And when you hear this English phrase, more than eight, that's gonna be synonymous with the symbol greater than eight. So inside our parentheses, where before we had probability x equals eight, or x was less than or equal to eight on just the previous example, we're switching this up. So I want the probability that x 
is greater than eight. Okay. Now, I'm still working with my standard binomial, 10, 17. All right, that hasn't changed. And I think you can see that. Can you see? Yes, you can see that on your paper. Okay, great. So I got 10 against 17. So here we go. If I wanted to think about this as a table, all right, let me do this again, P of X, right? Zero, one, two, three. I'm gonna go up to eight, nine, and 10. And let me go ahead and just box this real quick. All right, let's see which numbers we wanna include. This says X is strictly greater than eight. So if it's greater than eight, I do not want to include eight. I do want to include nine, and I do want to include 10. All right, so I'm gonna show you the two ways you could do this, and then you decide which one works better for you. So if you look at this, I only need these two numbers. So one option I could do is I could crunch the two PDFs. So I could get the probability at nine and the probability at 10 and add those two numbers right, through our OR formula back in chapter three. So this is the probability that X is nine or 10. There's no overlaps so or nothing I need to subtract out. So this would just be a quick binomial PDF because I have the equal sign, 10.79. And I'll add another quick binomial, <clears throat> excuse me, PDF of 10.7, 10. All right, let's see what that number is. So I've got all of those in there. Let's see, it looks like we're coming up with a number of about 15%. Okay, so we'll keep track of that. All right, so here, again, my first method, I could have added the two PDFs. I don't really wanna stress that these were two PDFs. These were two particular values of X. And that's all fine and good. But there's gonna come a time where you have a lot more than just two PDFs to add. And you saw even on my calculator, it's a little cumbersome to enter all of this in. So there's a, a different way that only involves one calculator function, but it involves the CDF. So we're gonna use the CDF again and the complement rule. So go with me. If I want these two numbers, I specifically do not want these nine numbers, right? I don't want zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight. But you know all of this adds up to one. So if you want these two, you could use the complement rule. So I could say the probability that X is greater than eight is one minus the probability that X is less than or equal to eight. All right, because these two plus these nine, and you might be thinking, well, there's only 10 numbers. There's really 11 numbers. Don't forget we have zero. So these first nine numbers and these last two numbers, they have to total, right, total one. We learned that way back in chapter three. Your sample space has to total out to one. And if I only want these two, I can do one minus these numbers added together and it'll give me these numbers. And the reason I'm talking about this complement rule is that if I can put this in terms of a complement and I can get this less than or equal to symbol here, I can just use one calculator command with binomial CDF. So here I'm gonna do one minus binomial CDF and then we're gonna go 10.78. And let's see what that number turns out to be. So I'll go one minus binomial CDF, 10.7, oops, eight. And then when I hit enter on that, look, I'm getting the exact same number. And for me, I think it's easier to do the complement rule because for this particular example, we only had two PDFs to add. But even on the one just above this, we had, I think it was nine PDFs to add, right? So the fewer PDFs I have to type in manually, the less likely I am to make a typo, and just the faster it can go if I'm using a CDF. So we're still getting 15%. And, and these numbers should be the same. I mean, the probability is the probability. So I'm glad they're matching. All right, so now let's take a look at this last one. I'm changing the words on it yet again. So here we're gonna ask, what is the probability that eight or more will do their homework? And that's a slightly different phrasing than just more than eight. 
but I see probability. So I'm going to put P with some parentheses. Now, more than eight is, oh, excuse me, eight or more is what I meant to say, eight or more on this one. That is X is greater than or equal to eight. All right, so you see the symbol changed. We had strictly greater than here and greater than or equal to here. But let's start to think about it in the same set. Let me make this table, this little fake table over here. X, P of X, go zero, one, two, three, all the way up to, we'll go eight, nine, 10. Let me put a seven in there just for this particular problem. Okay, so here we go. Let's see what we want to include. If X is greater than or equal to eight, I don't want zero, I don't want one, I don't want two, three, I don't want four, five, six. I don't want seven, I do want eight, I do want nine, and I do want 10, right? So you have a couple of options, right? You could add the three PDFs, that's fine. So if you want to go ahead and do the probability of eight or nine or 10, you can do that, okay? So this would be adding three PDFs. And again, I want to stress that these are the PDFs. Now, I, I don't want to do it that way. That would uh, require me to put binomial PDF in three times, might make a typo. And I want to show you the more efficient way. If you want these three numbers under here, right? but you know all 11 of these have to total to one, use the complement rule. right? If I want eight on up, I do not want seven on down. So the more efficient way is to say this is one minus the probability that X is less than or equal to seven. Okay. And I want us to take note, we're, we're subtracting out two different, or something slightly different in this example than the previous one, right? Because in the previous one, I wanted nine or higher, so I did not want eight on down. Here I want eight or higher, so I do not want seven on down. And it really is dependent on which symbol is in here. Right? If it's strictly greater than eight, then you need to bump up to nine to start. Or if it's strictly greater than eight, you don't want to include eight, right? This was including eight. So really I want to go one lower than that and not include seven. So be careful. Sometimes it's helpful to make these little tables to figure out where your cutoff is. All right, and again, I always start with what's in the parentheses. I think, what do I want to include on the top row? And then I'll work my calculator commands based on that. So here we would go one minus binomial CDF, and I'm going to go 10.77, right? And that's one calculator command. So one minus binomial CDF, 10.77, and it looks like I'm coming up with about 38%. And just, just so we can do it, I'll, I'll do it the long way, but again, it's just, it's really not worth it once you learn how to manipulate the binomial CDFs. So 10.7, oops, uh, eight plus binomial PDF 10.79. Oh, did I make a typo again? Yeah, see, this is why I don't do these ones. Plus binomial PDF 10 comma 0.7, no, 0.7 comma 10. All right, so we're gonna hope I didn't make a uh, typo. Let's see what we got. I didn't make a typo, okay. So there we go, we get 38%, but you can see it takes a little bit longer and I'm just I'm more prone to typos when I do it that way. So when you start to learn how to manipulate that PDF and that CDF to get your particular um, probability, whether it's a greater than or equal to or a greater than, you can become a little bit more efficient. And I wrote that note for you here. So if we look at this trait table, when you're in the binomial column, right? I put when you have an equal sign, use PDF. When you have a less than or equal to sign, use CDF. If you have greater than or greater than or equal to, use the complement rule, all right? Because your calculator is only built in on down. And when I say on down, it's built from a number on down. It's built for less than or equal to's. That's true for binomials. When we get to it, it's true for inverse norm. There's a bunch of things where your calculator is only built as a cumulative number. So from your frequency class on down. So for greater thans, make sure you're using the complement rule.